Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Today's video is going to be all about Blazing Deserts, the new DLC that's going to be coming out on the 13th of August for Battle Brothers. So what we're going to do here is they've released, uh, they announced, sorry, the game in January and uh, it's now July, so they've been doing regular dev vlogs on the features we're going to see. This video is just here as a summary of what's going to get released next month, what we know about the DLC so far, and uh, what we can expect. So uh, let's just uh, get straight into it. So far the devs have let us know that there's going to be a new realm of uh, southern city-states with their own law, equipment and services. There's going to be a new endgame crisis in the form of a religious war. The company's now going to be able to uh, get a gallery of feats that are going to grant permanent boons to help customise your company to your play style as you uh, progress through the campaign. There's going to be new opponents with different fighting styles, exotic beasts and desert raiders, southern armies. They're going to be quite different from uh, what we're used to those in the uh, the northern part of the map. There's going to be uh, new tactical and world map environments, and the devs have explained that these new tactical maps are going to change the way that combat works. There's going to be new origins to pick for your uh, company, like uh, slavery options and gladiator options. There's going to be new banners, weapons, armors, helmets, uh, new legendary locations, new legendary rewards, uh, new contracts and events. In fact, this, this DLC promises to be the largest one that has been released for Battle Brothers so far, and it's, it's quite exciting to think of all the new things it's going to do. I'll try and address them each one by one here. First off, the devs have talked about uh, the tactical battles and uh, the battle maps that they've been using. And what they want to do is introduce what they call a wealth, so we don't know how many that's going to be, but uh, of, of sort of backdrop battles. So when you're attacking brigands in a camp, you're going to be fighting in the camp yourself. When you've got zombies in a graveyard, there'll be tombstones and things like that. They have said that they don't want uh, the combat to become too cluttered, but hopefully with these new tactical maps, we'll bring a whole lot of uh, new strategic options and tactical optim options for the, uh, for the combat. Maybe some reworking of the AI, although the devs haven't mentioned that. That'll be something that would be really interesting to come from this year, from an upgrade to the maps, meaning new AI for the computer players and a bit more interesting combat. So it's not just your line and your second line, but there's going to be choke points. There's going to be a whole lot of new weapons in the DLC, which we'll get into later, but there's going to be more AOE effects. So that'll play an inter interesting uh, dynamic. And uh, there's also going to be some longer range weapons. So with the new tactical maps, that's something we're really looking forward to at the DLC, and uh, hopefully it'll work out really nicely. The city-states are going to have uh, a new service available to the mercenary companies, and that's going to be the Alchemist. The Alchemist uh, sort of fits into the position that the taxidermist did in um, previous DLCs, where they can make uh, various sorts of uh, grenades in fire pots, uh, smoke pots, a flashbang or a flash pot that can daze uh, the enemy. And they also cover potions. We're selling a lot of potions that you don't necessarily have to get the uh, the um, ingredients to make. So things for poison, night vision, uh, lion heart to bolster resolve. And the ability of potions now will be to pre-take them so if you take an anti-poison potion you'll become indemnified to poison for several turns or perhaps a whole combat they haven't made it exactly clear how that's going to work yet and uh, that should give it a bit more uh, use within the game rather than just being ignored and uh, these these shops will be available in in some of the cities but not all of them so that's uh, one thing we can look forward to is alchemy replacing uh, taxidermy in the southern cities Mercenary companies are also going to have the ability now to hire non-combat officers, people like a blacksmith, a drill sergeant, a scavenger, a surgeon. A lot of these roles are quite self-evident. The drill sergeant will help with the XP of your troops, it will help you control uh, your soldiers' morale, the surgeon will reduce the chances of permanent injuries and the, the chances uh, reduce the chances of death. And uh, the, the devs have talked about these sort of roles uh, helping to support more specialised playstyles. So if you're more interested in exploring with your group and just heading out on your own into the world, then the cartographer will help you by paying a bounty on the locations that you find. If you prefer more 
banditry sort of style or trade style, you'll have people that can support that. And you'll also have uh, roles that help when you're hunting enemy champions for bounties and loot. So it should add, add more, a bit more to the way you can play the game, which I think is, uh, is going to be something we can all look forward to. Overall, it looks as though what the devs are doing here with the retinue is they're giving a lot more validity to different play styles and a lot more quality of life in terms of inventory controlling, in terms of reducing the effects of bad RNG, especially towards the end of, of your playthrough, making it a bit easier to recover uh, if you make the proper preparations and make the proper investment of gold. So this is a change I'm really looking forward to in this DLC. Perhaps one of the biggest changes, and one that I'm really looking forward to, is the introduction of an uh, arena, a Roman-type coliseum, where you can go in with just a few of your mercenaries. Uh, I believe the devs have mentioned up to three mercenaries can go in, and you'll be fighting uh, beasts or slaves or captured desert raiders, professional gladiators, and but you know before the fight exactly what you're going to face, and you'll you'll be able to fight that day. From what the devs have said, you're going to be looking at about one battle in each arena per day. You don't have to travel to do it. But the interesting thing is once you once you go into the combat, you know what you're going to face. You can't retreat. You can't get out of dodge, so to speak. Once you're committed, you're committed. And there won't be any loot for anything that you kill in the arena. If your men survive, fighting in the arena will earn unique traits as they will They'll climb a, a ranking system from pit fighter to a champion, and there's a new gladiator background that you can hire your men from. So that uh, that's going to be really fun, really interesting, and it will also, I think, give you a way to help train new recruits up. If uh, you you're later on in the game, there's a few easy arena fights you can send your recruits in, get them trained up, get them a few levels and get them caught up. So I'm really looking forward to the arena and Gladiator and have my own Spartacus in uh, my mercenary band. So that uh, that sounds like it's going to be great. The DLC is going to pack a whole lot of new weapons and arms for the mercenaries to use as well from the, the Arabian Persian style of the southern states. We're going to have new weapons. Uh, we're going to have swords on the end of spears, which are going to be a sword lance. You're going to have new daggers, shields, uh, armors. You're going to have uh, composite bows, which are going to bridge the uh, the gap between a, a, a heavy armor-piercing crossbow and a a good range uh, short bow. They'll be a bit shorter in range, but have uh, have greater penetration than a bow, but uh, not as much penetration as a crossbow. There's uh, most importantly, I guess, is going to be the introduction of gunpowder, and there's going to be things like a hand gone gone or I guess a hand cannon and a uh, a fire lance, and these are going to be AOE type uh, weapons, and uh, in involve the use of cast iron and gunpowder and basically firing uh, shrapnel type uh, type things where you've got a single big shot that's a lot shorter range than a bow but uh, has to be reloaded every every uh, every time with new shot and shrapnel and powder carried it's uh, it's heavy heavy weapons that are cumbersome to reload and so they're sort of like where you're going to get one shot and it's going to excel against lightly armoured foes rather than heavily armoured foes. So it's going to have specific uses and the devs have talked about it not being uh, an overpowering sort of mechanic but just another another weapon in your arsenal. The other thing to note also is the AI is now going to start using whips which means uh, in, uh, in the previous um, DLCs the whip which is a long range weapon, well long range melee weapon didn't get used at all by the monsters, so that that's going to add new tactical elements uh, along with the use of the um, the AOE uh, weapon, and uh, they're also going to introduce a mortar weapon, which uh, means that engineers are now going to be an option in battle, and so the mortar is going to be a a long range weapon that can that can shoot a very long range. The mortar basically is going to be a weapon in combat that is fixed, unable to be moved, and can be shot a, a long distance and will be something that's more geared towards the end of the game, the late, the uh, the Holy War crisis at the, at the end. Uh, and 
it uh, could have a devastating uh, effect. Apart from human opponents like uh, assassins, slaves, conscripts and officers, there's also going to be three new monsters that the devs have talked about uh, in the DLC. There's going to be hyenas, snakes and uh, a freak. The hyenas are going to be a pack animal, extremely fast attack animal that can attack three times in a turn and uh, faster than the direwolves that we currently have. Then we're going to have the snakes, which are going to operate a bit like bill hooks in that they can they can grab someone, bring them in. They're going to be working on constricting movement and trying to suffocate your uh, mercenaries. And then we're going to ha lastly have the Efreet, which are going to be an end game boss sort of uh, monster, where they basically they can come in three three sizes that the devs have talked about, and the largest Efreet. The smaller freight can combine together to make a larger freight. The larger freight can throw the smaller freight across the line, so they could a larger freight can can toss, so to speak, a uh, a smaller one uh, past your front line into your back line to wreak havoc. And also, when you when you're killing a larger freight, it's going to break down into smaller freight as you go. So it sort of is going to split, and then you have to kill the smaller size, and then that smaller size will split into the smaller size, and then you have to finish them off to finish the combat. And also, the larger freight being made out of rock and sand is going to hit very, very hard. And uh, finally, there's going to be a lot of small changes as well, a lot of small new events, a lot of new trade goods, slightly changed what me mechanics on how the trade's going to work, which is based more on distance, not just if an item is made in a, in a certain city or not. There'll be items that are made just in the south, items that are made just in the north, and if you take, say, spices from the southern cities to the northern cities, your chances of realising a large profit are, are there. So it's going to become, trading's going to become a more rewarding mechanic within the game. And uh, that pretty much sums up uh, what I've covered today. That's just the dev uh, dev blogs that have gone through so far. We've still got a month to release. The game's going to be released on the 13th of August. It's going to be 1495 US or the your regional equivalent. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a like, leave some sort of feedback. Let me know how I'm going. I'm uh, just doing a couple of videos to learn how to make videos while I'm in uh, quarantine with what's going on in the world. So let me know how it's going. Let me know what sort of news you'd like to hear about the game. Uh, give me some feedback. Uh, like and subscribe. See you later.